Welcome to the next session on commodity derivatives and risk management. And uh, if you recall in the last class, uh, we discussed uh, about agricultural commodity derivatives. And we also discussed that uh, before a hedger or a speculator uh, decides to uh, go for a futures contract or a option contract on commodity derivatives, uh, that trader has to have a view regarding the future price. What is going to be the future price or future spot price which is going to prevail at a later point of time. Uh, depending upon that uh, you know expectation, the trader is going to undertake his trading strategy. So, it is becomes very very important for a trader to uh, analyze uh, different aspects of the commodity, the supply, demand, the fundamental factors, who are the um, major producing uh, countries, uh, what is the global consumption, global uh, uh, production pattern. So, all these fundamental factors has to be taken into consideration before uh, a trader forms uh, about firms uh, views regarding the future direction of the price for that commodity. And without this analysis, if a uh, trader undertakes derivative contracts, he may incur substantial amount of loss as you uh, remember or as you may be knowing, uh, Mr. Warren Buffett had once mentioned that derivatives are weapons of mass destruction. So, uh, the amount of uh, loss a trader can uh, have can be very high if the trader uh, uh, takes a, a trading decision without doing enough due diligence or analysis. And if you recall, we also uh, last class discussed what are the fundamental factors which can have a bearing on the commodity price. We discussed about uh, uh, you know the in terms of the supply factors we discussed what is the acreage of plantation what are the uh, you know whether there is any um, uh, acreage of farming whether there is any seasonality in production and whether availability of storage facility is there uh, or not whether export import uh, linkage is there or not and also uh, what are the regulatory factors which may have a bearing on the future spot price like uh, essential commodities act of government of India and the minimum support price uh, program of government of India. So, this uh, analysis of uh, the fundamental uh, factors are very very important for a trader before he or she undertakes a trading decision. Now, let us go to um, in the last class, we also discussed about the seasonality, how seasonality has a bearing on the commodity prices. Now, I will give a very uh, you know uh, small example how, uh, to measure uh, whether a particular commodity, agri commodity has a seasonality uh, incorporated into the price or not. So, uh, this numerical example which I am going to uh, you know show it to you, it, dip, it, it pertains to the sales figure, quarterly sales figure of a company, let us say or uh, let, okay, let me define what is a seasonal index. So, seasonal index measures the price of any given month relative to the annual average price. So, uh, uh, if in a given month uh, year on year for a uh, you know certain time period or certain months or in a year the prices tend to be high in comparison to the prices prevailing in other months then we can uh, say that this uh, you know this month is a seasonal month or a prices for some specific months are low in comparison to the uh, other months so we can also say, uh, say that this these are the months with high and low uh, values uh, are uh, exhibiting some kind of a seasonality. Now, um, how can we measure or identify the seasonality associated with some uh, prices or sales figure or revenue of a particular uh, you know revenue of a particular company or, uh, or prices of any commodity. Now, this is uh, this 
seasonal uh, seasonality can be calculated by using an index. So, how do we calculate the index? Let's. So, seasonal seasonal index is calculated as average price of a commodity in a given month by average price over time into 100. So, so this is, so how do we calculate the seasonal index? Average price of a commodity in a given month divided by average price over time. So, let us take an example. So, as given in the uh, PPT. So, uh, this is the, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a very simple example, nevertheless very uh, nicely it explains uh, what is the seasonal index and how seasonal index can be calculated. Let us say you have a company, the annu uh, quarterly sales uh, figure for the company is uh, given uh, as per Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 and the sales prices of 2001, 2002, 2003 is given. So, if you see uh, the quarter 1 average stands out to 48.7, quarter 2 average stands out to 71.3 and quarter 4 uh, average stands at 328.0. And when we uh, take the average of all values that is your 12 quarterly sales values what we get is a grand average that comes to 281.5. And if we want to find out the seasonality of Q1, that is quarter 1 seasonality, we divide the average of Q1, that is 248.7 divided by grand average, that is 281.5, which is giving us 0 0.88. So, that means Q1 uh, index value is 0 0.88 and if you compare this value with one uh, the Q4 uh, value that is 1.16. So, that from these values we can say that Q4 normally tend to have a higher sales figure as compared to Q1. So, uh, as compared to Q1, Q2 and Q3 and uh, uh, and uh, if we compare which are the two quarters which have a seasonality, you will have a Q4 and Q1. Q1. And how do we represent this 1.16 or 0 0.88? Quarter 4 so, uh, sales are uh, you know 16 percent higher than the yearly average. Similarly, quarter 1 which is having an index of 0 0.88 that can be interpreted as that quarter 1 sales normally is 12 percent less than the yearly average sales. So, this is how exactly seasonality in a sales figure can be uh, calculated. The same logic can be extrapolated for finding out the seasonality associated with different commodity prices. Now, let us go to the, this uh, you know um, histogram which you are able to see in your uh, uh, slide in the PPT presentation. If you can see this is the seasonality associated with four uh, commodities, agri commodities and seasonality associated with spot prices of these four agri commodities. So, that is your cashew kernel and you have your chana dal and you swab in spot prices and mentha oil spot prices. So, uh, by analysis of these uh, um, four blocks in this particular uh, 
uh, slide, you can make out that uh, cashew kernel has a very, very significant price uptick in the month of June. Similarly, you have for chana dal, you have uh, May, June, July are the uh, you know uh, months when price has gone down, and you have uh, November, December when you, uh, prices have gone up, and so on and so forth. Uh, similarly, for soybean, you have uh, June, uh, uh, you have. Uh, June, July, uh, September prices have gone down and you have August, January and February has a positive seasonality, positive uh, value that means normally prices increase uh, uh, in the month of January and February. Now, uh, just as an uh, you know exercise, uh, I am uh, I am going to give you uh, or this particular Excel file is available to you, and uh, this contains this contains as you can see this contains the gold price per ounce. All these are in US dollar price, gold price per ounce of gold and fertilizer price for uh, metric ton, uh, US dollar price of metric ton of fertilizer uh, prices are available and uh, these are the monthly prices. So, you have to let me know in the next session or you must work out during this uh, you know in the interim period what is going to be the seasonality associated with these two commodity prices and also as a food uh, you know food for thought do you think which commodity will exhibit higher amount of seasonality please recall that uh, in india uh, gold uh, prices are uh, you know demanded there is uh, there is huge amount of gold uh, uh, is demanded during the uh, post uh, harvest season and also marriage season and season coinciding with or months coinciding with uh, Dhanteras and Akshetritya. And uh, <coughs> fertilizer prices, uh, fertilizer prices, uh, fertilizer is uh, you know this is a DAP fertilizer. So, DAP fertilizer predominantly used during your you know harvest uh, during your plantation and uh, standing crop season for both rabi and kharif however one thing i would like to mention you here is that these prices are prevailing spot prices prevailing at you know international market so dap uh, price is in usa gold price uh, is uh, you know the international price now analyzing uh, just you know analyzing the fundamental factors would you be able to tell which commodity will have a higher seasonality anyway so i am not going to give the answer to uh, this assignment today we will discuss about this assignment in our next session so as the as, as i mentioned what is the assignment identify the high and low seasonal months for gold and dap fertilizer swap uh, spot prices now uh, let's uh, discuss little bit on uh, seasonality and backwardation of agricultural commodity all of you remember uh, i'm sure you must be able to recall what is the meaning of contango and backwardation so when do we call a uh, market to be con in contango a market is said to be in contango when the futures price is higher than the spot of spot price so that market is called as a contango market or a uh, in contango market a far month futures price will be higher than the near month future price that is will be that is your m2 is greater than m1 and m1 is greater than spot and what is a backwarded market or market exhibiting backwardation uh, in case of a backwarded market your spot price will be higher than m1 and m1 will be higher than the m2 so this is and uh, this is called your backwardation market and if you recall 
we discussed what could be the possible reason of a market or commodity prices to exhibit backwardation. Because uh, as per the cost of carry model, a future price of a particular commodity should be you know more than the prevailing spot price. However, at some special situations, you can have the uh, you know future price less than the spot price and predominantly uh, you know backwardation occurs in agricultural commodities because during the pre-harvest period when there is a supply crunch people are more keen on holding the inventory or spot prices increase more than the future price. So, because of there is a you know lack of supply or inventory is not available people tend to pay a higher price for purchasing the underlying agri commodity at a higher price. Now, let us say is it really happens uh, in case of a agricultural commodity. So, in this case uh, I am going to show you how the uh, contango and backwardation uh, in uh, happens for a commodity called uh, for, for soybean. So, uh, the, uh, you know the in the link file I will show you uh, the comparison of st uh, spot price uh, prevailing at indoor and the near month future price at NCDEX that M1 uh, price at NCDEX. Please focus on the first row. I hope you are able to see this properly. Yes, so this is the price of soybean spot price and the nearby future price. This uh, data uh, is from uh, 2011, that is your uh, uh, 4th June 2011 to it has gone up to. 20th June 2016. So, uh, now let us discuss little bit on the you know contango and backwardation aspect. You know that uh, when spot is greater than uh, futures it is a backwarded market and why a reverse is a contango market. So, you have a spot price I mean you know available in a column B and nearby future price available in a column C and basis is uh, spot minus futures and when basis is negative it is a contango market and when basis is positive it is a backwardation market. So, uh, if you just I will just scroll down if you see there is a continuous period of contango followed by you know um, a long period of backwardation. So, it, this, this is a period when like uh, uh, May 5th 2012 it has uh, gone up to backwardation up to 6, 14th June 2012. And In fact, there is a prolonged period of backwardation during uh, uh, prolonged period of backwardation starting from 21 November 2013 to it has gone up to almost uh, uh, fourth, 11th April 2014. And uh, this is the uh, in a graph which shows the spot and futures price uh, relationship. So, if you can see that whenever there is a spot price is in red front uh, red line and uh, nearby futures price is in blue line and whenever spot is greater than the futures price you have a backwardation and vice versa. And I just did a basic uh, you know uh, excel um, calculation on number of days when the market is backwarded. So, out of some 1600 data points which has been considered in this um, uh, in this excel file. So, uh, 1345 data points which I have considered in the data uh, in this file uh, uh, around 870 75 uh, uh, days uh, the market has exhibited uh, uh, backwardation and remaining uh, some 445 odd number of days has a contango market. So, this is uh, you know clearly uh, by analyzing this detail we can see uh, that 
that uh, you know contango and backwardation happens in a very regular phenomena probably this when we go to the other uh, you know lecture sessions when we will be analyzing other uh, commodities uh, we will be able to realize that uh, backwardation does not happen so often on commodities which are primarily held for investment purpose like gold and silver now make my next question to you why a commodity will remain backwarded for a prolonged period it uh, you know um, uh, the harvest pre harvest season could be or pre uh, plantation season could be 2 to 3 months but why can why why a commodity will remain uh, you know um, scarce for a rem remain uh, backwarded for a long period of time this could be the reason that in an economy the demand for the commodity is far higher than the supply of the commodity so in that case uh in in such a situation you will have when you when the spot price will be more higher than the futures price and uh, the commodity will be exhibiting high uh, more no, more number of days the commodity will be exhibiting a backwardation now um we will be uh in the in uh i have identified as you uh, as you recall uh, Na national commodity derivative exchange and mcx has around uh, um, uh, 30 35 uh, around um, 40 45 agri commodities listed and as part of uh, this particular uh, you know lecture series i have identified only one commodity that is soya bean and uh, derivative of soya bean that is soya oil and soya meal for a detailed analysis so that a person who is interested to uh, you know do a fundamental analysis of uh, of a particular agri commodity um can um, take certain clue that how different uh, you know supply demand uh, different uh, uh, other factors uh, gets into the uh, or which influences the price of the commodity spot and futures price of the commodity now let's go to uh, uh, our understanding on uh, soya bean and if you remember um, the soya bean we in india we pronounce it as uh, mostly soya bean but uh, in some other uh, you know countries it's it's pronounced as a soy bean so uh, let's continue with i'm more comfortable with uh, producing uh, pronouncing it as uh, soya bean so soya bean uh, is um, is a plant uh, you can see the soya bean uh, is a uh, is planted uh, during june july and the harvest happens during october uh, september october and uh, it's a oil seed and uh, once these pods uh, are dried off these um, you know soya beans are collected from these pods and the soya bean is crushed to uh, generate soya oil and also soya meal i i am sure all of you must have at some point of time heard about a company called nutrilla uh, sorry a brand called nutrilla which uh, sells uh, soya nuggets so so this when we are talking about soya meal soya and soya nuggets are prepared from uh, the soya meal and uh, i am sure you must have heard about a uh, uh, you know come uh, uh, about a item called uh, tofu and soya milk and soya sauce so tofu soya milk soya sauce is also produced from different ex uh, extraction process uh, from uh, by using soya bean as a raw material and uh, uh, why have i chosen a soya bean um, as a you know case study uh, soya bean is uh, one of the largest uh, oil seeds produced in the world it is around 55% of all kinds of oil seeds or 
you know uh, oil extracting agricultural uh, produce uh, being produ uh, being produced uh, all over the world and uh, soya bean uh, and soya oil futures are also one of the longest running uh, commodity futures in indian uh, exchanges uh, at ncdex um, as you recall we have discussed many a time uh, many a times uh, uh, the um, because of various reasons exchanges or regulatory bodies uh, ban uh, um, ban a uh, ban futures trading in a commodity but somehow soya bean and soya oil futures commodities have not been banned and it is uh, it has a one of the longest uh, you know uh, running uh, contracts available for traders so this particular picture which you are able to see there are three pictures uh, one is your uh, soya bean plants and uh, soya bean um, been crossed to generate uh, soya sauce uh, soya milk tofu and soya nuggets and the other one is a soya oil so um, in fact why am i spending little time on explaining um, uh, or taking you through these pictures because uh, many times uh, you know we need to understand a particular commodity from the very very basic what is a commodity who is a producer who is a consumer you know what is the weather pattern how uh, you know how weather pattern influences what kind of a you know farming technique is used so all this information uh, has to be uh, understood in the right perspective um, so that a trader is able to formulate his or uh, her view regarding the future price uh, now um let's now let's uh, discuss about the factors influencing factors influencing uh, the soya bean soya meal and refined soya oil prices in india one thing i would like to mention here is that even if soya meal and soya oil is produced in india but sorry uh, soya meal and soya uh, oil is produced from the soya bean these three commodities have different kind of a supply demand factors so the su supply factor or the demand factors for soya uh, uh, meal is quite different from the uh, demand factors for soya uh, oil so uh, let's go back to uh, you know what factors influences the prices of these three uh, close re related commodities so uh, the production of uh, this soya bean in major producing nations like you have a united nations brazil argentina china and india india uh, produces around uh, um, 10 million uh, tons of soya bean and uh, united states produces around 108 millions of uh, uh, soya bean and um, who are the major major exporting nations of soya meal uh, argentina brazil usa india and european union so uh, please note that even if china have produces um, you know china is the fourth largest producer of soya bean uh, soya bean but it does not export soya meal because their own internal consumption of soya uh, you know be soya based uh, protein like tofu and soya sauce is so high that they do not export soya meal however if you uh, see uh, india is one of the uh, you know important exporting uh, nations of for soya meal because after extraction of soya oil whatever soya meal is generated india exports uh, soya meal is a very important uh, poultry feed so all hatchery farms and uh, you know um, farmers who are into fish farming or uh, farming of poultry they uh, they use uh, soya meals uh, for uh, as a nutrition to the uh, you know poultry and the fish however whatever is not used india you know india exports as soya meal to many other countries and uh, who is a major exporting nation of soya oil usa argentina and brazil and 
One thing again I would like to highlight here is that even if India is the fifth largest producer of soya, oil, soya bean, it is a net importer of soya oil because our oil consumption demand for cooking oil is so high that it is not whatever we are producing, it is not locally enough. We import substantial amount of soya oil from the global market. So, uh, the soya bean price in India gets influenced by whatever the production happening in, uh, in a major competing nation. Soya meal price gets governed by the demand uh, in major exporting uh, demand of India soya meal uh, by the importing countries. Similarly, uh, the price of soya oil in India is influenced by uh, you know whatever the price prevailing uh, in the international market and uh, if there is a substantially uh, higher price we end up importing at a high price and our uh, you know the cost of um, consumption is incre increases so analysis of uh, you know these three uh, closely related commodities can uh, you know can be uh, has to be understood with the right perspective because these three commodities even if they are deriving their uh, you know basics uh, they are uh, you know these two commodities basically soya oil and soya meal uh, is derived from soya bean but the supply dem the price uh, at which these commodities are bought and sold in the indian market are substantially different and uh, you know de depends upon different uh, international uh, factors. So, at, uh, today I would like to end up this session at this point of time. We will continue with the remaining part of analysis of soya oil, soya bean and soya meal uh, price, uh, prices in the next session. Thank you all of you.